And welcome to the season four premiere of Ryan Sports Views. Tonight I'm reviewing Mississippi State 7, Texas Tech 34 in the 2021 Liberty Bowl. Mississippi State lose because Mike Leach had the great idea to turn this into a rivalry game. And more than that, but it helps that Mike Leach can't win rivalry games and he basically turned it into one himself. We were the ones who got the $2.5 million beatdown put on our ass. Not them. Depressing, frankly. But there you go. Scoring was started in the first quarter. Brooks with a 19-yard touchdown run for Texas Tech to make it 0-7. to Garibi? Garibi? Garibe? We'll go with it. 31-yard field goal, 0-10. Rah Rah Thomas for State getting the only points they would score. 17 yard touchdown catch to make it 7 to 10. Garibe makes it. 26 yard field goal to make it 7 to 13. That's the way it would go into half. 7 to 13, but it gets worse. Smith gets a one yard touchdown run to make it 7 to 20. JJ Spartman with a 14 yard touchdown catch to make it 7 to 27. And Thompson with a one yard touchdown run to make it 7 to 34. That's the way it would end. 7 to 34 for Texas Tech. Yeah, not a good game, but yeah, that Ra Ra Thomas catch, amazing. Will Rogers stolen that back shoulder. He was right there with a the defender right on him and he falls back into the end zone. That was a good catch. No, that was a highlight. But everything else, Mississippi State just no. It was not good tonight. Nothing. And I mean nothing was good tonight. Zero. The defense couldn't make a tackle for the first three drives and get owned for it. Then the rest of the game, they're good, not great. But did the offense do anything to help that? No, they didn't. They didn't help it. They were like, yeah, sure. They came up limp. The offense came up limp. Will Rogers, the air raid was not in effect tonight. Where was the passing? Not there. Or the air raid passing, the high-flying aerial attack. Not there, no. Maybe some screen passes, but this was more like early season Mississippi State. And even then, they didn't wake up halfway through the game. This team cannot play a full game. This whole season, that's been the problem. And if they're not awake, they're heavily asleep. And when they're heavily asleep... And you could say full game in either way. You could say they only play for a half or a number of quarters, or they only play well on one side of the ball. And then special teams didn't help either. They made some special teams miscues that honestly helped them lose this game the way they did. And again, Mike Leach should have challenged that muffed punt. Williams didn't touch that thing, but no, he doesn't challenge it. Like the last time they were in the Liberty Bowl. Why? Why didn't you challenge that? He didn't touch it. At all. It falls in front of his hands. Is it the bounce? He didn't touch it. Maybe he went for it because you knew, or he knew, you weren't going to challenge it. But the last time, just like the last time you were in the Liberty Bowl, you did not challenge the muffed punt. I don't want this team to ever play in the Liberty Bowl again, whether that's against Memphis or in this game. Either way, something's wrong with his team when they play in the Liberty Bowl, at least recently. But yeah, they beat them, or they beat UCF there when Sylvester Croom was the coach. So, what happened? What happened? Mike Leach was supposed to be much better than Sylvester Croom, much better than Dan Mullen, much better than Joe Moorhead. Honestly, he's still better than Moorhead. Anybody could be better than Moorhead. Hell, I could too. But here's the problem. Mike Leach, I think, seriously, the team, he does not fight for his team. I, I don't see it at all. For me, I think Mike Leach, he definitely isn't totally that guy. He's... He's a good coach. He came up with an air raid. But it's like, well, Man United, Ralph Ranick. He don't know what the hell he's doing. People learned from him and done better than him. 
And it also, well, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that Joe Moorhead is Ralph Ranick and Zach Arnett's Chris Armis, but damn it, it seems kind of like it. Because, yes, Mike Leach came up with the air raid. He did. But other people have perfected it. In the NFL and college, they have perfected it. Just like Thomas Tuchel and Jurgen Klopp per perfected the Gegen Press. And Julian Nagelsmann. And Jesse Marsh. To some certain extent. I mean, honestly, one of those things is not like the others. But Chris Armas definitely didn't do it. But... And there's a reason United sucks right now. I told you! Armist to Man United video. Check that out. I told you. Um, well, that being said, because he's not just throwing out cones and bibs. No, he actually has a tactical say. I should say. But other than that, basically what I'm trying to say is Mike Leach came up with an air raid. But it's definitely... Not the 1.0 air raid that's popular now. It's the 2.0. It's been built up by other coaches who have perfected the air raid. Mike Leach is the godfather of it. Doesn't matter when you're getting outplayed by your own old quarterback as a head coach. And Texas Tech had a perfect game plan, but I guarantee you this. Mike Leach, if he doesn't win nine games and beat Ole Miss next year, he gone. And even then, even if they let him win eight and beat Ole Miss, if he loses the bowl game, he gone. He's on a thin line. He's got to win nine games and beat Ole Miss. They're not going to let him lose to Ole Miss three years in a row and let him stay. The boosters will not have any of that. The alumni will not have any of that. I guarantee you that. Okay? I guarantee you that. So, with that being said, it comes down to the fact of Mike Leach may just not be the cutting edge anymore. And it's not working. And it's not perfect. Yeah, they have their moments, Will Rogers has been amazing this year, except for tonight. And honestly, the Ole Miss game. Great. What else? What are they supposed to do? And who comes in? Say Mike Leach does get fired. He only wins eight and loses to Ole Miss. Missing that ninth game, even though they make the bowl. But they have somebody else coach the bowl, like Zach Arnett. What do they do for the next season? Ed Ogeron? I mean, I'd totally be glad with Ed Ogeron and Joe Brady. I'd be good with it. But he kind of failed. I mean, with Joe Brady, he did do well at LSU that championship season. So what, one good year, two good years with State, and then he falls off? At least we have those. I, I don't know what to tell you. Mike Leach is honestly the best coach we could get. Right now and probably for a couple of years. Billy Napier is in Florida. He's going to be there for a while. And I like Billy Napier. What? You try to pry... You try to pry Penn State's coach. Franklin? Franklin? You try to poach him? Maybe that'll work. I think he was the reason they played so well other than Joe Moorhead. Could work. What, you pulled Deion Sanders from JSU? I mean, shit, go ahead. I mean, try. I like Deion. Go ahead. Eddie George from TSU? Maybe. Tennessee State? I mean, he's got something there. W what do you do? I, I don't know. You're kind of painted into a corner, though. That's the problem with Mike Leach. I I'm starting to question him. You're kind of painted into a corner, and that's the problem. And that is why I'm worried about Mississippi State. I'm not so sure they win 11 games next year. And I've been saying, I think they could go 11-1. and one. No. You got blown out by Texas Tech. You really think you are? Nah, no, no, no. And I know they had a perfect game plan, but it's not happening. 
Tell me why I should believe that State could at least win nine plus next year. I don't think they hit nine wins if they keep playing like this. And it's not because of Will Rogers. He's going to get better next year. But it's basically him carrying. And yeah, they'll have their linemen back. I don't think that matters much. Honestly, losing that, those many linemen on offense and defense due to COVID restrictions, I don't think that changes anything. If you're D-line you, you should be able to next man up. And same with offensive line. If that's your bread and butter, the linemen, which historically has been State's bread and butter, you should be able to next man up. But you didn't. You shouldn't have been beat this bad, even with those absences. I'm not going to let you use that as an excuse. Because it's not an excuse. I, I'm just so befuddled about what happened tonight. That was a clown show. A shit show of epic proportions. You get a pretty damn good bowl game and you crap your pants. I thought with a performance reminiscent of the Moorhead era. With a performance reminiscent of Dan Mullen when he didn't give a shit anymore. Or him in Florida. What are you doing? I swear to God. What is this? I'm not. I don't get it. I do not get it. Mike Leach is losing the plot. I am sorry. I'm telling you. It may have to be done. And it may be next year. And if he doesn't win nine games and beat Ole Miss, he's out the door. I'm telling you right now. Nine games and beat Ole Miss. But then what do you do then? You're kind of painted into a corner. Unless you bring out Ed Ogeron and Joe Brady. Hell, one of them. But you need both of them if you really want him to succeed. But hey, they both don't have a job yet. At least Ed Ogeron. I like Ed Ogeron. I know he coached Ole Miss, but did he really do good with him? The only reason people know that is because he recruited Michael Orr. That's the only reason people know. The blind side. That's the only reason people know. Unless you're part of the SEC. But let's be honest. I know the people watching, some of you, half of you care. Half of you know. The other half are just people who watch me for my soccer content and are here because they like me. You don't know unless you watch the blind side. That's the only reason people know Ed Ogeron coached for Ole Miss if you weren't part of the SEC. Or root for anybody in the SEC back in the early 2000s. I know because I've always been a state fan. I was born a state fan. Okay, I know. I was born in Mississippi. I'm from Mississippi. You all know this. I moved up to Illinois at four, you know, right outside of St. Louis at four. Long story, but honestly, everybody knows at this point. I've said it 30 times. Come on now. But that's why you know, okay? I don't care about that, though. I would take Ed Ogeron. I would. I would. I like him. I like him. I barely remember him coaching there. I was like five, six, seven. I barely remember. And we were trash. They were trash too. We were both trash. Except for that one year with Sylvester Croom. They got to the Liberty Bowl. We were trash. We weren't relevant yet. Who cares? And they were honestly weren't relevant at that point either. I think we could let that be water under the bridge. Hell, in football, soccer, as in that football, people move across Derby lines all the time. Kyle Becker played for Toronto FC and Montreal. Same with Daniel Lovitz. Same with Raheem Edwards. Same with Laurent Simon. It's happened before. And pretty much, the 401 Derby and the Egg Bowl are the exact same. Mississippi State fans, I implore you to look up the, the 401 Derby in Toronto FC. You'll see we're pretty damn alike. It works out. There's a reason I'm a fan of both. I mean, I chose to be a fan of Toronto teams, but it works out, doesn't it? And Montreal's pretty much old Miss. Okay? That's my, that's my uh, assignment for you. Do it. And I want to hear people in Starkville become TFC fans because, damn it. And I want Torontonians to become Mississippi State fans. 
And I've already sort of tried. Wink. Even though it may just be basketball. Wink. Let's be honest, it's going to work. With that being said, yeah, I told you this was going to be a rant, but hey, here's the good part about it. I ain't got a rant much this year because Toronto FC is getting Lorenzo Insigne. Yes, we won't suck this year, so enjoy this season starting rant because you ain't going to get much more. I got to give the heat somewhere. Because Toronto ain't going to let you get it. Because we won't suck this year. And Canada will be just fine too. Maybe one time for each. Maybe. You're welcome. You got it somewhere. So, I am pissed off though. So, with that being said. There you go. If you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends. Check out my Patreon. 5 10 or $20 a month. Anything's appreciated. Also, if you want to, you can wait for my YouTube memberships. That'll be $1.99 or $5.99 a month. Two tiers. We'll work those out. They'll be up by the middle of the new year. And there you go. As well, on January 1st, I will be doing a Toronto FC off-season so far video. Or maybe the 31st, so I could do the Insignia video on the 1st. Because it seems like that'll be done already. But I'm waiting for Toronto's announcement. And there you go. Except on the off-season so far video, I'll pretty much hit on the Insignia thing a lot anyway. But there you go. There you go. So hopefully I'll see you there. So if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends. Hit that big red bell notification. Once you do subscribe, like, share, subscribe, comment. Super chats in the live streams. Put this in play. This share this with your friends and family. I'll be, it'll be awesome if you do. I will appreciate it. And there you go. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace. See you later. And not many more rants this year in season four. I guarantee you that. But this was a good way to start. Peace.